dear brothers and respected elders and, the li- and any sisters who might be listening at homes I begin in the name of Allah and I thank him and praise him and glorify him I seek his forgiveness and I pray to Allah to enlighten our hearts with his love love for his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to guide us all to the right path so that we may all live like muslims and die like muslims and rise like muslims on the day of kiamat what maulana was saying wasn't just for the elders it is applicable to all of us although maulana was addressing the elderly congregation or the elderly members of the congregation but everyone is in need of such advice irrespective of their age irrespective of their background of their gender bi huzur ne jab kalma padhaya to abu bakar ko bhi wahi kalma padhaya ya aur hazrat fatima ko bhi wahi kalma padhaya ya alag alag kalma padhaya the same kalma is read by men by women by elders by children and we are ahlu sunna wal jamaa we believe the deen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left behind and he taught he taught the same prayer to abu bakr and the same prayer to hazrat ali the same prayer to hasan and husain same quran was taught to abu bakr and the same quran was taught to hazrat ali there are some people they say the prophet taught other people few things and the prophet taught us plenty things but we are not one of them alhamdulillah بعض لوگوں کے اندر ہیں یہ جراثیم وہ تفریق کرتے ہیں دے سے دیٹ دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ٹوٹ سم پیپل ادر تھنگس ہی اونلی جسٹ گیو دم اے بریف گلمپس اینڈ ہی لیفٹ دا ریئل دین ود ہز فیملی ود حضرت علی سب دے سے دیٹ ان ہز ڈائنگ مومنٹس رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سمن حضرت علی اینڈ ود ان اے فیو مومنٹس taught him thousand different ulooms each with a thousand different chapters so thousand thousand you know how what that means a million to chand lamon mein huzur ne aisa pilaya 1 million chapters of knowledge within a few moments only to hazrat ali nauzu billah min zalik rasulullah was commanded by allah to say qul ya ayyuhan nasu inni rasulullah ilaykum یہاں تو سنا ماشاء اللہ الفاظ بھی بڑے ہیں کلیا یوہنس انی رسول اللہ علیکم جمیا رسول اللہ واز اف دا میسنجر اف اللہ فور آل اف مین کائنڈ ہی واز اے میسنجر اف اللہ فور دی عربز فور دا نان عربز فور دا مین فور دا ویمن فور دا یگ اینڈ فور دی اولڈ اینڈ وین رسول اللہ یوز ٹو لیڈ پریئر دے یوز ٹو بی مین دے یوز ٹو بی ویمن ایز ویل سم ایٹ دا بیک دے یوز ٹو بی چلڈرن اف اینی تھنگ Abu Bakr and Umar and Usman used to be behind Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he used to lead the prayer. Many ulama sitting here hadith reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim layalayni minkum ulul ahlam wa nuha and the people behind me should be specially Abu Bakr was always with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam throughout throughout his life he was with him in the cave and is with him in the grave. shall remain with him till the day of kiamat shall rise with him be with him on the pond and then beyond you might be saying why is he saying this to us i am saying this to you many years ago 20 30 years ago when we first came to these countries <coughs> mashallah perhaps you didn't meet any ghair muqallid you might not have met any shia but now even if you don't meet them as maulana was saying their message is being broadcast in every house before you might say we were immune to these viruses to these germs but i am sorry if you say you are immune anymore i won't accept it because i know for a fact uh, in every house your children when they go out to schools if not schools okay in preston and blackburn and bolton baddu gujarati che whatever but when they go to universities in london and birmingham and in other places okay they might be going from here but there are plenty other infected people coming from other parts and they pick up these germs 
And when those germs are set in, and people pick them up, and then Allahu Akbar, then those germs spread. Few weeks ago, and just this week, in London, in one of the local newspapers, one Muslim journalist, I have, I have on my phone uh, a picture of the, what was published. A Muslim, supposed Muslim journalist, he wrote a column in which he threw out his filth, what was within him, and is disgusted at the supposed ulama. When he goes to the masjid, his sons or children were going to the masjid, and with the Christmas season coming up, Obviously, in many schools, people that talk about Christmas and so on. So Maulana must have said, be, be careful, you know, Christmas is coming up, we don't celebrate Christmas. He says, haram. So he says, I was so disgusted to hear from my little daughter, from my little son, that Christmas is haram. This is what the ulama are teaching in the masajid. Well, what do you expect them to teach in the masajid? Yes, go home and celebrate Christmas. And then he said, oh, I was so disgusted to hear and learn little people saying, Maulana is saying music is haram. So what do you expect the Maulana to teach him how to play the piano? <laughs> what do you expect the Maulana to, to hold dancing classes so your little Zainab and little Maryam can learn how to dance in the masjid? You might say, well, that's just one foolish guy saying that, but kitni machhiyan talaq ko khalaab karne ke liye kafi hoti Ek machli pure talab ko kharaab karti hai kar deti. Many germs when they spread, Allahu Akbar. When the germs start spreading, when the virus spreads, then you can't, you can control an infection, but you can't control a virus. Uh, this is a virus. Uh, this is, these are spreading. And now, to, I was saying 20, 30 years ago, if you didn't know about Ghair Mukhalids, if you didn't know about Shias, if you didn't know about Brailawis, and you thought you are simple, mashallah. You know, we are alright. I don't speak Gujarati because my Ustad was Gujarati. I have a lot of respect for our Gujarati elders and brothers. So I like speaking a bit of Gujarati here and there when I can. And mashallah, and our elders as well, mashallah. Mona Jalad Sahib and others, mashallah. We have the immense respect for them. And Allahu Akbar. But if these things didn't affect you, didn't matter so much. But now that is no longer the case. And the message is spreading through every house. Uh, people are picking up. One old lady, supposed Sunni lady, uh, she phoned me up and she said, because now with Muharram just gone now, in every house almost you have cables, cable, uh, Sky TV, and people throughout. We don't have, or oh, let me be clear, we, we, by, by we I mean Deobandis. Many of us might not even know we are Deobandis, but you should know you are Deobandis. Alhamdulillah, we are affiliated with our Akabir, and we should be proud of the fact we are Alu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and Allah has blessed us with deen because of the barakah of these Akabir. If it wasn't for them, you would be sitting here now. If it wasn't for Hajim Dadullah Muhajir Makki, Maulana Qasim Nanotwi, Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi, and others, uh, who knows, you might not even have been a Muslim today. Because their elders ask the elders, they will tell you, when in India they started a tahriq uh, to convert all Muslims into Hindus, it was the Akabir of Deoband, Shaykh al-Hind, Maulana Mahmud Hassan Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he started a tahriq, a revolution. Then Maulana Ilyas Rahmatullahi Alayhi, the pioneer and the, and the reviver of Tablighi Jamaat, sent Jamaats all over India. And then in 1947, when India-Pakistan was separated, and many of the Muslims went to Pakistan, leaving behind many, many villages in which there were a few Muslims, many, many did become even Murtad. And then it was these Akabirin who then distributed Jamaats all over the country a network and encouraging and reviving and awakening the Muslims and bringing them back into Islam and Allah then brought many back into Islam. Uh, so you owe your Iman and Islam firstly to Allah uh, and because of the barakah of our Akabirin 
And then when people came here, mashallah, they established the Arul Ulum Deoband uh, in 1866 in Deoband, and then the same year, Mazahirul Ulum, and then later on, Nadwatul Ulama and others, mashallah, they followed suit. When our Akabirin came here first, who was it who established a madrasa in the mid, in the heartland of Europe? It wasn't a Ghair Mukhalid, it wasn't a Shia, it wasn't no Brailvi either. It was one of the sons of Darul Ulum Deoband. Hazrat Mawlana Yusuf Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, although he spent his life mainly in Mazahir Ululuhum, but Mazahir Ululuhum is also a sister madrasa of Darul Ulum Deoband. Uh, when in 1866 first they established Darul Ulum Deoband, then in the same year, the same year they established Mazahir Ululuhum, then one Mawlana Ahmad Ali Saharan Puri Rahmatullah Alayhi, who was the first Sheikh al Hadith of Mazahir al Ulum, many years later, about 13 14 years later, when Hazrat Mawlana Qasim Sahib Nanotwi Rahmatullah Alayhi visited Mazahir al Ulum, and he made it clear to them, yes, Mazahir al Ulum is also one of our faith, but it's still the offshoot of Deoband. And our Akabirin were all one. They were all one. They regarded Deoband as our mother. So, Alhamdulillah, we are here before. You might not have realized, uh, but because of our the work and the effort of our Akabirin, Hazrat Mawlana Yusuf Sahib, may Allah bless him, give him a long life. Our other elders, Hafiz Patel Sahib, Ahmad Barkatu, may Allah bless him as well. And, has, and Hafiz Sahib started the effort of Dawat in here. If it hadn't been for them, when the, when the Jamaats used to go and make gusht back in the 50s and the 60s, and people started coming here, and some of the people would say, you know what Mawlana? If we were going to go to the masajid, there were plenty of masajid in India, Pakistan. We've come here to earn pounds. Uh, we've come here to earn pounds, but these jamaats kept going, elders kept making the effort. Now, alhamdulillah, there's a network of deen in different forms. This is all Allah's dhalika fadlullahi yutihi man yasha. Allah's fazl, but then Allah uses people. Allah uses people from amongst each other uh, to help them and to safeguard them and to teach them and to propagate and to, and to preach to them. Uh, so now 20, 30 years ago, if you didn't know anything, you didn't have any, no problem. But now, these germs are setting into every house. Few weeks ago, an old lady phoned me and she said, I've heard this story. What's the story? That Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala who beat up Hazrat Fatima. Is that true? I said, do you think it's true? Well, she said, I heard it. I heard it on the telly. That Hazrat Umar, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Hazrat Umar went to her house because Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she did go to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu to request a share in the inheritance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thinking that whatever wealth Rasulullah had left behind, there was an orchard by the name of Fadak, from where Rasulullah used to provide for the expenditure of his family. Hazrat Fatima thought she was under the impression it was part of Rasul, in, in Rasulullah's ownership. And having been in his ownership, she is his daughter. And when a person dies, and then his wealth is distributed amongst the warasa. So she being his daughter, she deserves a share in that. So she went to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anu, who was the Khalifa of the time, and Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anu made the issue clear to her, O oh Fatima, whatever you ask me from my wealth, you can have as much as you like. But if you're asking me to give you a share of the wealth of Rasulullah, then there isn't any. Because what Rasulullah left behind isn't anybody's wealth, it is sadaqah, it is, in, it is for the whole ummah. Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha became satisfied, she was disappointed, but she was satisfied, and then she returned home, and then it makes mention, and the wordings used, the Shaykh al-Hadith, Mawlana Idris Kandalvi rahmatullah alayhi, at one instance has clarified this issue. In some of the hadiths it may, makes mention that she remained upset with Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anu, but Hazrat Kandalvi rahmatullah alayhi has made it clear. She separated herself because Hazrat Fatima wasn't a mahram of Abu Bakr that she needs to come and see him every day. Hazrat Abu Bakr used to go to their house to ask everything okay. If there was anything he could do fine. If not, she wasn't his daughter. 
daughter the anbora mahram for him that he needed to speak to her or fatima should go to abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu's house and whatever and in any case after rasulullah hazrat fatima fell very ill because she missed rasulullah so much she couldn't travel anywhere and after only 6 months away she after lapse of 6 months she left this world and so they say that during this time when hazrat fatima went to abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu and he did not give her anything Oh, see, and the the Shias, especially in the month of Muharram, they really blow this issue up. Ah, ji, beti beti hoti hai, cha hai kisi dushmani ki kyu na ho? Ah, beti gayi thi, Hazur ki beti gayi thi, Abu Bakr ke ghar gayi thi. Lekin Abu Bakr ne itni bhi haya na ki ki beti hai aur Hazur ki beti hai aur hak mangne aayi hak nahi diya. Abhi Azat Abu Bakr ne chalo Hazur ki beti ko hak nahi diya, to apni beti ko diya. नहीं समझे यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड देव अबू बकर और सो वेरी डॉटर आयशा शी वाज अ वाइफ ऑफ रसूलुल्लाह एंड इफ देयर वाज एनीथिंग टू बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड वुड आयशा रजीयल्लाहु अनहा नॉट हैव अ शेयर इन इट एज़ वेल बीइंग अ वाइफ ऑल्सो अ स्मॉल शेयर इफ इफ मैन लीव्स बिहाइंड चिल्ड्रन देन द वाइफ और वाइव्स कलेक्टिवली गेट ओनली वन एथ सो रसूलुल्लाह डिन लीव मच बिहाइंड but whatever he had left behind if it would have been distributed aisha would have also got a share did abu bakr if he didn't give rasulullah's daughter any share did he give his own daughter any share so when he didn't give his own daughter any share it shows there was nothing to give kuch hota to apni beti ko bhi to dete na ye bata do ki wo kaise gaye the ki mera maal taqsim nahi hoga we we arrest kar diya na ha the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left he he said what as abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu he made the issue clear to us at fatima that whatever rasulullah leaves not just rasulullah any prophet leaves behind prophets don't inherit anything from the top because when you inherit things even wealth then with wealth comes commitment commitment responsibility allah doesn't want a prophet to be responsible for anything else but allah So Allah doesn't allow any prophet to inherit any responsibility to commit himself to anybody else. Uh, so Allah keeps His prophet free from the top and from the bottom. Na upper kuch hota hai lene se aur na aage kuch dene ke liye. Whatever the prophet sal Allah, whatever all the prophets leave behind is all sadaqa. And then when Hazrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu taala anhu made the issue clear, it is supposedly said that Hazrat Fatima was upset. She wasn't upset. As Mawlana Idris Kandalwi Rahmatullah Alayhi has given a wonderful explanation that as Fatima felt embarrassed in a way that my father was Imam Al Ambiya, Allah gave him Deen, and I was asking for Dunya. Be Azur to Deen chhod kar jaye, or me, although that was in Dunya, this was Baraka. You know, mashallah, some of our akabirin, ustad, bazurog, if they give you little hadiyah, even people, what they do sometimes, you know, m- many people, mashallah, when they go to some elders, they give them a pound or five pounds, and what many people don't spend that throughout their lives. Why? Because they think this is big barka given to them by their elders. We who can have more barka with whatever he touches than Rasulullah. So, as Fatima Razi Allah Taala Anha was under the impression, whatever Rasulullah has left. be it little will carry immense barakah for me and my family but then having realized that she doesn't deserve anything she was feeling embarrassed and there was no need for after that for hazrat fatima to see abu bakr anyway so he did she didn't and in any case the 6 months that she remained ill when a woman falls ill she needs another woman to come and tend to her Hazrat Ali didn't have any slaves once Hazrat Fatima she heard Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been sent many slaves and the prophet is distributing them amongst the community so Hazrat Ali said oh Fatima why don't you go and ask for a slave as well to help you out in your domestic work as many people do have servants and slaves and Hazrat Fatima went on the recommendation of Hazrat Ali to see if she can get a slave from Rasulullah for her housework <coughs> But at the time, as the Sheikh of Hadith, Rahmatullah Alayhi, has written this in Fazal Amal as well, this Hadith in Fazal Zikr. So the Fatima she came to Rasulullah, 
to request a slave at the time there were many other people present and as Fatima being full of haya she could not sit around and she when she came saw the scene and immediately returned to her home Rasulullah saw Fatima coming and then returning on the same way so after the majlis completed Rasulullah went to see Fatima Fatima you would come to see me Ya Rasulullah I heard this is what had happened and I was thinking if you can also give me somebody to look after to help me, assist me as well it would be nice I get very tired doing housework and so on what did Rasulullah say oh Fatima shall I give you something better at the end of the day when, you, when you've done something whatever uh, before you sleep read 33 times subhanallah 33 times alhamdulillah 34 times Allahu Akbar so somebody said what do you think about a person who is he who doesn't give Fatima the share that she is due? Us shakhs ke baare mein kya khayal hai? Woh koon hooga joh Fatima maangne aayin aur na dein? To humare ek ustahad hai Alama Khalid Mahmood sahab Rahmat barakatum Allah unki umar mein bhi barakat ta farmai As at quite age, mashallah, he spent his life debating with people and Shias, Qadianis and others and Hazrat says, when somebody asked me, what do you call a person who doesn't give Fatima her right? And they say, and he said, I said, a Nabi. Because Fatima Hazur ke paas bhi to maangne aai thi, to Hazur ne bhi to nahi diya tha na. Jab Hazur ne nahi diya, to Hazrat Abu Bakr ne jab na diya, to kis ki sunnat par amal kiya? Hazuri ki sunnat par amal kiya na, na de kar. And then they say, and then they say, then when Hazrat Fatima came to Abu Bakr, and then Abu Bakr didn't give Fatima. Umar was very angry, wanted to teach her a lesson that she shouldn't do this anything again. So she went, he went to her house. And when he went to her house, he knocked on the door and asked the door to be opened. They realized it's Umar. And so they were scared. Hazrat Ali was at home. Hazrat Umar smashed the door down. As the Fatima was coming to open the door, and when she approached near, she was expecting, and Omar flung the door open, as the Fatima fell down, he started kicking her, and the door fell on her, hurting her, injuring her, bruising her, and causing her to have a miscarriage. And so this is why we hate Omar. Nauzu billah min zalik. I said, Bi Allah akal de, dil dimaag bhi de, to admi soche, think. How can this possible, this story, how can it have any shadow of truth even in it? When Azat Ali became, when Allah blessed Rasulullah with the Nubuvat, what age? Hazur ki umar kitni thi jab Allah ne Hazur ko Nubuvat ta farmai? Chalisa. And the Prophet passed away at what age? So how many years does that give Rasulullah? 23. Hazrat Ali was 10 years old when he became a Muslim. When Allah blessed Rasulullah with the Nubuvat. So when Rasulullah passed away, how old was Hazrat Ali? 33. Okay, I won't burden your minds too much. I'll tell you that Umar was around 50 years old. Rather 50, yeah, around 50 years old. Because when Rasulullah passed away, he was 63. When Abu Bakr passed away, he was 63. When Hazrat Umar passed away, he was similarly 63. So when Rasulullah said, Hazrat Umar remained a Khalifa almost 11 years. Hazrat Abu Bakr was Khalifa almost 2 years, just over 2 years. So 11 and 2 is? So 63 minus 13 is? 50. So Hazrat Umar, when Rasulullah passed away, how old was Hazrat Umar? 50. 50 year old man. Is he a young man or an old man now? And by the time, you know, fighters retire, 35, 36, they retire. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, 50 year old man comes to somebody's house and who else is at home? Hazrat Ali. How old is he? Is, was Hazrat Ali a coward or was he a brave man? Was he strong man or a weak man? Strong man or a weak man? Strong, brave, 33 year old young man should be at home and his wife is who? Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a 50 year old man comes to his house and beats up his wife in front of him. You gotta, did Rasulullah give Hazrat Ali his daughter in marriage because he couldn't look after him? Could Hazrat Ali look after his, the Prophet's daughter or not? Did he look after her or not? 
He did. So if this story was to have any truth in it, it shows if there was any blame, a 50 year old man, Allah forbid, Allah forbid, Allah grant you all security and aman and peace, Allah forbid, young man, 33 year old young strong man, sitting in his front room with his wife and children, 50 year old man comes and start beating up your wife, what would you do? Would you do anything? Will, will you say to him, give her another one? <laughs> Some people might. <laughs> Somebody comes to your house, young strong man, proven, accepted. Biazat Ali ne jango me apni maharat bahadri ke karna me sabit kar chuke the. He'd shown how strong and brave he was on many occasions. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had praised his bravery, his strength. And mashallah, his, his fun and his ability to fight on many occasions. So he's a proven strong young man and he